Hello everybody and welcome to another C++ tutorial for beginners. In this video, I'm going to be covering pointers. Now in the previous video, I covered references. Please make sure you watch that before moving on to this video or you at least know what references are because that knowledge is going to be important to understand what I explain here. So with that said, let's talk about pointers. All right, so I've actually brought out the drawing tablet here to start explaining pointers, kind of the blackboard, whiteboard, whatever you want to call it. And anyways, I think this will be helpful because I can do some illustrations and it will make it more clear. You guys can actually see, you know, a visual of what's going on when we create a reference or we create a pointer. With that said, though, what is a pointer? Now, a pointer is actually a variable that stores the memory address location of some other value or object. So a reference does not do that. What a reference does is point to kind of the same box that another variable already points to. So I'm going to do some drawings here to show you what I mean. So if I create a variable, let's say we make int x and we make that equal to two, what kind of happens here is we have this box that gets drawn in our computer's memory. We can label this the memory, excuse my very messy handwriting here. And anyways, in the memory, what happens is we have this box. This box has a two inside of it. This has some memory address location. Let's say zero X, maybe two, three, a B, whatever. And then we have some label to this, right? Which is called X. So X allows us to access this box right here. Now though, when we create a reference, so we say something like int and then we do my really bad ampersand Y is equal to, and then we make this equal to X. What happens is Y just points to this same box. And so now whenever we create or sorry, whenever we change the value of X or Y, really just changing whatever's in this box, both of these values or both of these variables are going to change because they're both pointing to the same thing, right? That is what a reference does. Now, this is different from a pointer. I'm going to show you how we create a pointer. So when we make a pointer, what we can do is say something like int, we can do maybe a Z and then before the Z actually, we write an asterisk. So I'm going to say int uh, and then asterisk Z. And then this needs to be equal to the memory address location of whatever we want this pointer to hold. Now I understand this is a little bit confusing here, but the ampersand is the symbol or sorry, not the ampersand, but the asterisk is the symbol for pointer. So whenever you initialize a pointer, you use an ampersand. I will show you on the uh, in the code after. Obviously, this is just a rough illustration. But what I'm saying is I'm making a pointer called Z and I want this to store what? Well, what it needs to store is a memory address location. And so what I need to do is use the ampersand to access the memory address location of wherever this pointer wants to hold. And in this case, I will say X. And so now what actually happens here is I've said int asterisk Z is equal to ampersand X. And now instead of having Z point to this box, a new box is created. And this box has its own location like zero X, A, B, C, D, whatever. And then inside of this box stores the memory location of whatever this is. So 0x, 2, 3, A, B. And notice that 0x, 2, 3, A, B is the address of the box that's storing the value 3. And so now what happens is Z has this label kind of here that's going to this box. And now if I access Z, I get the memory address location of the variable X, otherwise known as the variable Y as well, because that's an alias. And so if I want to change the value in X, I need to use this memory address location to modify this. And you can do that. I'll show how that works. But notice the difference here. We're actually storing a memory address location. And if I were to actually look at the memory address location, so I said ampersand Z, what this would give me is this, this other uh, memory address location that stores the memory address location of the other variable. So hopefully this kind of makes sense. But that is how a pointer works. And you can have nested pointers. You can have a pointer going to a pointer, going to a pointer, going to a pointer. And well, all of those are going to have their own memory address locations, and they're all going to point to a different memory address location. And this is why it's called a pointer is because we're given some box here that tells us how to point to a different location in memory. And using pointers, we can do all kinds of fancy stuff. We can do pointer arithmetic where we add one to a pointer. We subtract one from a pointer. Like there's all kinds of wild stuff you can do with pointers and they're really useful, but just really understand this difference that the pointer is its own value. And that value tells us the location of a different separate value. 
And so what we actually need to do, as I said, if we want to modify the value that this pointer is pointing to is we need to do what's known as dereferencing it. Now, when you dereference a pointer, what that does is give us the value that's actually stored in the memory address location that this pointer is holding. And the way you dereference a pointer is you put an asterisk before it. So if I'm accessing Z, I would put an asterisk before it so that rather than getting this memory address location, when I look at it, it would give me the value stored in this memory address location. So anyways, I think that's enough for the illustrations here. I'm going to pause this. Now I'll show you some examples in the code. So we will continue in one second, but I need to quickly thank the sponsor of this video and this series, which is Algo Expert. As you guys know, I work at Algo Expert. I am a proud employee there and proud instructor on the platform. They have, in my opinion, genuinely the best platform to use to prepare for software engineering coding interviews, everything from the curated questions to just the great environment to actually write code in just makes it a very pleasant experience when you're actually studying for your interviews. With that said, check out Algo Expert from the link in the description and use the code tech with Tim for a discount on the platform. All right, so let's create some pointers here. What I'm going to do to start is make a variable. I'll say int x is equal to two. We'll go with our classic example here and I'll say int and I'll say asterisk y is equal to and then x. Now let's just start out by c outing both of these values. So c out uh, x and then end l and then c out y and then end l. Okay, so let's run this and we get an issue. Oh, the reason we got a problem is actually a good problem to run into. I'll discuss this is because I said int and then pointer y is equal to x. I did not put the memory address location of x. So this is invalid because x is giving me two. This is not a memory address location. And so instead I need to put the ampersand to get the address of x. So now when I do this, it actually gives me the memory address of X, right? So just to show you this, if I print out the memory address of X and then I print out Y, which is the pointer to X, you'll see that both of these are the same thing. However, if I point out or print out, sorry, the memory address of Y, you're going to notice this is different than X, right? Because this is a box that is storing the memory address of X. So hopefully that's clear, but that's like a really good illustration of the difference between a pointer and a reference, right? And so again, this pointer is storing that actual memory address. When I just access that pointer blindly, right? I just use Y, it gives me whatever it's storing, which is the memory address of X. However, if I look at the memory address of the pointer, that's different than the address that is holding. And now to show you the dereference operator, if I want to see the value associated with the memory address that this pointer is pointing to, then I put an asterisk before it. Now you're going to see that we get two. The reason we get two is kind of what happened is the computer went to whatever was being stored by Y. It saw that that was the location to X and then looked up that location, found the value in that location and returned it to us. So this is the dereference operator. So that is kind of the basics of pointers. Hopefully that gave you a good understanding of how they work and what they are. OK, so just a few notes here that relate to pointers that don't relate to references. When you create a pointer, you do not need to initialize it. It does not need to be equal to something. It is totally valid to have an empty pointer or uh, like a default pointer, whatever you want to call it. So in this case, I initialized Y. No problem or sorry, not initialized, declared Y, but didn't initialize it wasn't a problem. You can have a pointer that is equal to no. Again, we haven't really covered that, but this is still valid. We won't get a problem if we do that. We can have a pointer that points to a different pointer that that is totally valid as well. Uh, we can do pointer arithmetic so we can do things like add pointers, subtract pointers, delete pointers. Won't really get into that too much, uh, but that's just like that differs from references, right? Because with references, you needed to initialize them. They needed to actually reference a value or reference a variable. They couldn't be equal to no. And I didn't mention this in the previous video, but you cannot change what a reference references. Whereas you can actually redeclare or redefine a pointer and have it uh, point to something else. So I can say something like int asterisk y is equal to and then ampersand x. And then let's make another value here int w is equal to three. I can change y by just saying y is equal to then ampersand w. That is totally valid. Whereas if we were using a reference, this would not be valid. We could not do something like y equals ampersand w if y was a reference. OK, so now what I want to show you is something interesting, which is using pointers with arrays. So I'm going to create an array 
I'm going to say int uh, x. I think this is the syntax. I always completely forget the array syntax. It's all different in these different programming languages. And we'll just make this like one, two, three. Okay, so now what I want to do is actually get the pointer to the first uh, location in this array. So to do this, I'm going to say int and I'll call this head is equal to ampersand x. Okay, so now let me just see out and uh, this sorry should be asterisk head because this is a pointer. Let me see out head and see what we get and see if I made any mistakes. So when I run this, we get a problem can't convert int asterisk three to int asterisk in initialization. OK, let me have a look here and I will be right back. OK, so I realized I made a small mistake here. I put the ampersand X. Now, that was actually incorrect when we're talking about an array. I understand this is confusing. Like sometimes you use it, sometimes you don't need it. Anyways, when we're talking about array, I think I mentioned this in the previous video. The array itself is actually just equal to the memory address of the first location in the array. So when I say something like asterisk head is equal to X, this actually gives me the location of the first element in the array automatically. And so there's no need for me to put the uh, ampersand X like that. However, I could do something like ampersand X zero. If I do this, we'll see that does actually work. There's not a problem with that. But by just doing ampersand X, we get an issue. And notice this is what ampersand X zero is. Now let's look at what we get. It was ending in EB zero. OK, let's look at what we get when we just look at X. Same thing, EB zero, right? OK, so now what I want to show you is how we can loop through this array just using its pointers and pointer arithmetic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say for uh, we can say something like int i is equal to zero. We can say i is less than and I'll just hard code in three here. I won't do like the size of array or anything. And then I'll say plus plus i, although we could do i plus plus as well. And now what I'm going to do is change head on every iteration. So I'm going to say head is equal to X plus I. And then what I'm going to do is say C out and I'm going to see out asterisk head and L. And actually, first, let's just see out head before we do asterisk head and uh, see what we get here. So if I run this, notice we get different memory locations. We get zero X 61 F E A C and then B zero and then B four. OK, we added I, which was either 0, 1 or 2 to X. Great. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to see out asterisk head and see what we get. And when I do this, we get 1, 2 and 3, the values of our array. Now let's change these to be 4, 5, 6. Let's run this. Notice we still get 4, 5, 6. So the point of me showing you this is that if we add some value to a pointer, that simply increments the address of that pointer. And in this uh, instance here, what we just did is access the first address, second address and third address of the elements stored in this array. Because we had the first address, we knew that all of the values after were stored in the subsequent addresses, right? So in like the plus one, the plus two of the address uh, to make this really simple, imagine the head is equal to one, right? So element four is equal to one, then element five would be equal to two and element six would be equal to three. So by adding one to the head each time that allowed us to access the subsequent elements. And that's what I was trying to show you here with this pointer arithmetic that you can do something like add something to a pointer and then I dereference this pointer that I was changing every time to actually get the value associated with all of these elements. So with that said, I think this is a good point to leave it at. Hopefully this was a good introduction to pointers and at least allowed you to understand the difference between a pointer and a reference. This stuff comes with practice and these symbols are really confusing when you see the asterisks to define a pointer and then you use it to dereference. Then you use the ampersand to define a reference. Then you use it to get the memory address location like they don't make this very easy. I don't know why they couldn't pick some other damn symbols to use. But regardless, this is the way it is. This is a pointer and this is a reference. So in future videos, we'll see more of this and we'll see kind of why we actually would want to use these things. But for now, just understanding these topics is really all we need to do. With that said, if you guys like this video, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another one.